Mount Pleasant is, of course, home to Central Michigan University. Fire up chips! But there's lots everyone can enjoy on campus, right, John? That's right, Amy. CMU is such an integral part of the Mount Pleasant community with more than 16,000 students who arrive each fall. And these students get to experience plays, concerts, community events, and even CMU football that everyone can enjoy. Mount Pleasant is a lot more than Central Michigan University. There's a charming downtown you can stroll through, nature to take in, and of course, great places to eat at. John, I think it's time for us to fuel up for our Michigan's best day in Mount Pleasant. So Elmo here at Max and Emily's, uh, you have a little history. A lot of people know about Max and Emily's, not only for your sandwiches, which we'll talk about in a second, but this music series you have and that you guys started this, right? Yep, so Tim and I started the music series back in 2008 with a young lady named Monique Berry, who she fell in love with the restaurant and said, hey, I want to come play a show. Mm -hmm. And we've had 11 years of series since then. And you brought in some pretty big names. Brian Vanderark's been in here. Brian Vanderark's been here, The Verf Pipe, Toad the Wet Sprocket, our good friend Jeff Daniels. Daniels. Yeah. Quite the gamut of, of artists to showcase the community. Well, I love the connection you have to music here in the community, but you also have these sandwiches. Tell me a little bit more about Mount Pleasant. What do you think about it as a town and as how it relates to the university? Well, Mount Pleasant is a college town. We try to cultivate ideas and sandwiches that the students will think are unique. Yeah. And if we have the ability to work with the student on creating that unique sandwich, yeah. a sandwich that's special to them, a sandwich that they get every time they come in on yeah. Tuesday for homework, and then suddenly we're like, all right, let's put that up on the menu and see what happens and see if other people enjoy that as well. That's happened before? Absolutely. There was a, a guy named Jesse who came down here and he created the Fiery Turkinator. Your number one seller. Number one sandwich that we have here. And it was selling every day, all the time. And so we said, all right, well, this is the number 63 now. And on graduation day, he's standing there next to his sandwich cap and gown, he's holding a 63. You know, that's, that's wonderful for us. The fact that we can have our guests not just be part of the business, but be part of our family. All right, John, so yes. you have to create a sandwich. What is the dream sandwich for you? It'd have to be a wrap. It would have to have chorizo, and it would have to have, um, Oh, maybe some refried beans in there too? <laughs> you just made a burrito. I did. You did not make a sandwich, you made a burrito. Okay. The gonzo. Is that what we're gonna call it? The gonzo? <laughs> That's the, that's the next part of the equation is what do we call the sandwich? Well, yeah. Because it's, it's gotta have a good name. So here at Max and Emily's, they have more than 80 sandwiches on the menu, and I think we can probably find something we'd like, right that's Amy? That's right, and they're available all day long from breakfast all the way through lunch. You can get something delicious to eat. I think we should fuel up for our big day yeah. in Mount Pleasant. Let's do it. <laughs> Well, it looks like we liked our sandwiches. <laughs> we did, yes. <laughs> do, do well. Yeah, I'm stuffed. I think we should go walk it off maybe and enjoy some of the nature here in Mount Pleasant. There are over 1,000 acres of parkland near Mount Pleasant that you can explore, including some beautiful spots along the Chippewa River. Known as Michigan's laziest river because of its gentle current, it's the perfect spot to kayak, canoe, fish, or just stroll along. The GKB Riverwalk Trail is located right downtown and offers almost two miles of unspoiled nature, from Chippewa Waters Park to Pickens Field. How often do you get to go to a drive-in burger joint? Not very often, but you can totally do it here in Mount Pleasant. John's Country Burger has been open for a long time, right John? Yeah, they opened in 1957 and it does look like a burger joint you might have seen back from the 50s. Well, it's within walking distance of both CMU and Mount Pleasant High School. And you know what you can get here? Burgers and shakes. Thank you. Woohoo! All right. Look at this, Amy. This looks awesome. Awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, this is a good looking burger. Two patties, right? Mm. Two patties, cheese, lettuce. Special sauce. Pickles, tomato, or to pickles and mayo. And uh, yeah, it looks great. I'm gonna get right into my shake. <laughs> I don't often allow myself shakes. Wow. They're not on my current Michigan's Best Diet, but today, because it's a special day. It is a special day. Because it's the best day in Mount Pleasant, I'm gonna enjoy it. <laughs> I'm going for a burger. Here comes my Whoa. special surprise for John. I didn't tell him but I ordered them something really spectacular. And this is the donut sundae? <laughs> Who loves donuts more than Gonzo? No one. So therefore, we got the donut sundae. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. 
I must find the donut. It's in there. <laughs> All right. Oh, but that donut, perfect. The fudge, whipped cream. Must have more. You can finish the rest of my burger, Amy. See, I know how to make this guy happy. Just give him donuts. Mm. <laughs> Here at John's, you can eat in your car, but there's also a spot that you can eat at inside. That's if you, true. If you're struggling with food management <laughs> inside your automobile. <laughs> I'm dripping everywhere. I must eat faster. In addition to John's Country Burger, there's several other old school dining spots that you just have to check out when you're in Mount Pleasant. The Saginaw Chippewa Tribe opened the Zebu Wing Center in 2004, and it's a testament to the history and culture of the Anishinaabe people. Ray, tell me a little bit about this special place. Zebu Wing means gathering place and it used to be the gathering place for our ancestors along the Chippewa River, which runs through the Isabella Reservation. Tell me a little bit about what Anishinaabe means. Yeah. <laughs> and how you pronounce that word is Anishinaabe. Anishinaabe. And it means first man lowered from above and placed on this earth. So the Anishinaabe people here on this reservation, the Isabella Reservation, believe they were here on this continent, North America, since the beginning of time, original people of this land. So as a gathering place, yes. why is this uh, an important part of Mount Pleasant and an important thing for the tribe? Mount Pleasant was one of the uh, stopping areas in the seven stopping areas of the Anishinaabe people. And in the fall, the Anishinaabe people would come here to Mount Pleasant to harvest the huckleberries, or another word for the huckleberries is billy berries, always looking for food substances to, uh, to help the community to, to survive through the winter time. Mm -hmm. And what does is, what is the museum offer now for, to Mount Pleasant and to, to everyone in Michigan? The Zeebowing Center likes to look at themselves as more than a museum. They, that's why they're a cultural society. We have our lecture halls and our classrooms down the hall. They get traditional teachings of the culture and the heritage of this land. Down the hall here we have a research center where people come in here and they're looking for their ancestors, who their ancestors are. There's two specialists in there and they can help them locate their ancestors wherever they are. The museum was built in an effort to do the NAGPRA Act, or re repatriation and reburial of uh, the Anishinaabe people. And then so the cultural center was built on that premise, bringing the culture and the heritage of the Anishinaabe people back to this community, back to Michigan, and now the world. The Zeebowing Center is an utterly fascinating and rather sobering walk through the experiences of the Anishinaabe culture and people. I thought it was incredible. Yeah, it really uh, takes you through a little bit of a roller coaster of emotions because you start learning about the early history, the early days, uh, their lifestyle, what, what traditions were like, family life. Then you get toward the end of the exhibition and you kind of get that sobering facts of how they were treated. Yeah, it, it's a must visit when you're in Mount Pleasant. No matter the time of year, Soaring Eagle Casino is the largest attraction in Mount Pleasant. Or you can head downtown, belly up to the counter, and get an old-fashioned phosphate from one of the last classic soda fountains around at the Downtown Drug Soda Shop. It's a step back in time with homemade food to boot. There are several classic Mount Pleasant bars on Main Street. You can easily hit up Marty's, make a stop at the Brass Ring Saloon, and then finish the night off at the Bird. The Bridenstein family has owned the Bird since 1933. It's one of the most popular spots in all of Mount Pleasant. From students and faculty to townies and families, everybody comes to the Bird. And here's a little known fact, it's one of Gonzo's favorite places in all of Michigan. Ben, you know this is one of my favorite bars in Mount Pleasant. Uh, how long has this place been in, the, in your family? Uh, it's been in our family for 86 years now. 86 years? 86 years, oh yep. Oh my goodness. Yep, yep. Oh. We've been in this same location in the very seat you're sitting in since the mid-40s. So what is it that keeps people coming back to the bird, you think? We want people to feel comfortable here. I hear people come back all the time, oh, I was here 50 years ago because we've always had that comfortable feel. It's just a great place to be with nice people and great food. Can you give everyone a sense of 
of what they can experience. I know you have a good craft beer list. Uh, I'm gonna have this bird burger because I know it's been on the menu since I was a college student. The, the infamous bird burger. Yeah. It comes with ketchup, mustard, pickle, onion, and slaw is the kicker. There you go. So you, gotta, you gotta have the slaw on the burger. Otherwise, it's not a bird burger. Well, for that, I say, fire up chips. Yes, Mount Pleasant is home to Central Michigan University. But you know what? I do know that it's much more than that. It certainly is. From incredible walks through nature that you can take to an awesome and humbling Native American museum that you can't miss. Plus, great places to eat and drink. That's how you spend a Michigan's best day in Mount Pleasant. For more information, go to MLive.com. I'm John Gonzalez. And I'm Amy Sherman. And this has been our Michigan's Best Day in Mount Pleasant, brought to you by Mount Pleasant Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. Come meet Mount Pleasant.